Hey BeatStars community, my name is Sam and I'm a producer from the UK. I've teamed up with BeatStars to bring you a three-part video series on how to make pop smoke drill type beats. If you want to check my catalogue, go to my page beatstars.com forward slash audio by Samuel. If you're a producer, artist or anybody interested in the modern music industry, I suggest you hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so that you're updated whenever there's a new video like this released. This is the second part of three videos. In the first, I showed you how to make a chord progression and melody in the style of Pop Smoke. If you haven't watched the first video yet, be sure to go back and check that because I show you some really cool techniques and tips. In this session today, we're going to be covering the 808 pattern and sequence the drums. So I'm going to start by programming a simple 808 pattern using just root notes. To do this, I'm going to open up the browser and drag in an 808 into the sampler. Be sure to pick this sample pack up from my website so that you can get started with your project. Once you've downloaded the files, go over to your media browser, find your downloads folder and open the folder from there. To set up the 808, you can drag it into the, into the space here, into quick sampler optimized or original. And that's just one way of doing it. However, I prefer using the sampler instead of the quick sampler. And the reason why is because the sampler has a, the legato feature open up a new sampler instrument. I'm going to go to software instrument, sampler, multi-sampler, mono, create. Open the sampler and drag the 808 into zone per file. So the 808 is now laid out over the keyboard. Now we're ready for pro tip number one. Set up your 808 properly. So I'm going to go to synth over here to where it says details and we change the mode to mono or legato. In this case, I'm going to go for legato because I want some smoother slides. The polyphony needs to be turned down to one and the glide can be ranged from anywhere from 30 to around 120. The more millisecond glide, the crazier the glides will sound. So I'm just going to set it around 114 for now and we can adjust this when we start programming the 808. The other thing we can do with the 808 is to use some filter so we can cut off some of the top end if we don't need it and to give it a little push with some drive. You may find that some 808 samples may need some slight pitch adjustment as well and you can do that using the fine tuning dial over, over here. Okay, we're ready to sequence an 808 pattern. Right click on the grid and create a MIDI region. So a good place to start with your bass line is the root note. Now you can let the 808 play throughout the whole bar. Or you can choose to cut it on beat 3 so that it stops with the snare. So to sequence the slides and glides we need to input notes that are an octave or two octaves above our root notes here. For example I'm going to put in an E flat here. Experiment with the placement of the notes to get different styles of glide. Remember to go back into the sampler to adjust the glide. You can use the drive to help bring the 808 out on smaller speakers like phones and laptop speakers. And the more you pull back the low pass filter, uh, the more muffled and low the 808 will sound. <laughs> Okay, so I'm fairly happy with that 808 pattern for now. You can always go back and edit this later. I'm going to move on to the drums. Pro tip number two, 
sequencing the drill drum pattern. Remember, you can get these sounds from beatstars.com forward slash audio by Samuel. Go to the sound kits and I'm giving away the sounds for this project so that you can get started straight away. I've set this up as a bookmark so that I can go straight to it. The next thing you can do is press Command and A to highlight all of the sounds and I'm going to drag these over here into Drum Machine Designer. Now Logic has opened up an instance of Drum Machine Designer and I can begin sequencing the pattern. I'm going to close the Drum Machine Designer for now and I'll come back to this later when I, when I go to edit my sounds. The next thing that I'm going to do is right click on the grid and create pattern region. I can now move the browser out of the way so I have more screen space. So here you can see a list of all of the sounds, but some of them are missing. So I need to go to the plus button here, kit pieces, and Logic hasn't included these ones in. So I'm going to add all. The next thing I'm going to do is go to over to the right where it says 16 steps and change this into 32. Now it's time to start sequencing the pattern. So I'm going to begin with the hi-hat. To start sequencing the drill drum pattern, to right click on the arrangement page on the track and create a pattern region. So the hi-hat in Pop Smoke Drill Type Beats has a skippy, syncopated, dotted eighth note pattern. And you can count this on the grid by, by clicking one, missing two, clicking one, missing two, clicking one, and then missing one. And then repeat this pattern over and over. These are the main accents. So that should sound like this. You can add some swing to the beat by going to the I and then using this button here to add some 16th note swing. Once you're happy with the swing, we can go to the arrow and adjust some of the velocity. I'm now going to fill in some of the gaps using the other hi-hat. Now I'm ready to move on to the snare. In a typical trap beat, the snare or the clap would go on the third beat of the bar and sound like this. But in drill music, the snare or the clap goes on the third and the eighth beat. So move the second snare back by one beat. It's now time to put in the kick. The first beat of the bar is always a good place to put the kick. So the foundations of any drum beat are the kick, snare and hi-hat. So now that I've got these patterns in, I can go ahead and add like other accents using effects and percussion. Now it's time to go into the drum machine designer and start adjusting the sound individually. This will save time later for when I want to mix the beat. So as you can see by the levels over here, the kick is through the roof. It's clipping by over 12 decibels, which isn't good. So we can pull the volume back on that by finding it in the drum machine designer, and pulling this back. I also use this as a chance to mono the kick as well by turning the polyphony down to one so that, that I definitely don't get any note overlaps. Do the same with the snare. And the hi-hat. Once I'm happy with the basic mix, I can right click here, convert to MIDI region. I can then go to edit at the top, separate MIDI events and separate them by note pitch. So here you can see the parts that I created. 
I'm going to get those tracks and bring them to the top so I can see them easier. I'm holding down command as I select them. So I can select multiple tracks. And then drag them up to the top. To add some width, I can start panning the hi-hats left and right. Now that I've sequenced the drum pattern, I can fill in the gaps using extra percussion and effects. This will emphasize certain beats in the bar. For example, one popular effect in drill beats is the gunshot. So I'm going to put that on the first beat. Find the gunshot, right click, and then create MIDI region. And I'm going to mix that in quieter. Then going to add some reverb to it. Logic's chroma verb allows you to set the decay in time with the beat. So I'm going to press the sync button here and have it decay after a one bar. The next element I'm going to make is the reverse symbol. These allow a smooth transition into the first beat of the bar. To do this, I'm going to program a crash by right clicking on the grid, creating a MIDI region, inputting a note using the command button, mixing it in slightly quieter. Then I need to right click the region and bounce this in place. And this has bounced the symbol into an audio file. Click the region, go to the region on the inspector and reverse. You can enhance the build up effect by using a long fade. So I'm going to turn this right up and shorten the region so that it comes in like that. Move that right to the end so that it drops on the one. With the reverse symbol, I'm going to include a riser. So I'm going to right click, create MIDI region. Once you're happy with it, right click the region and bounce this in place. Trim it and move it to the end of the section so that it drops into one. <laughs> So an element that you hear in Pop Smoke songs, such as the Yore, produced by 808 Mellow, are beep sounds. So I'm going to include one of those in the beep. <laughs> Lastly, I'm going to add a conga, just to add a tiny little groove before the bar drops. <laughs> The main elements of my beat are done and I'm going to move on to arranging it. I'm going to start deleting the tracks that I haven't used. Now is a good time to start naming my tracks. This is particularly useful for when you're exporting stems and uploading to beat styles. So the quickest way I found in Logic, go over to where it says track and region and edit from there. So I called the first one chords using command and C and command and V to paste that in and hit enter. So now it's time to get all of these parts and expand them all into a full song. So the first thing that I'm going to do is press Command and A and then Command and R so that I've got a duplicate of all the parts and I'm not worried about uh, losing them if I was to delete some. I'm going to move these out of the way for now so that I can get to work on an intro. And in this case I'm going to have the beat start with just the melodic parts uh, and not the percussion. So I'm going to save the drums for later. I'm going to move them out of the way for now so that they've got to start on bar 16. Same with the 808, however I'm going to copy and paste those over and I'm going to look at these ones and I'm going to remove the slides in the first part so that I've just got the low root notes going on. Maybe leave one of the slides. <laughs> out. 
As I'm going along, I'm also adjusting the levels slightly. I'm going to mix it in the third and final video, but it doesn't hurt changing the levels as I go along to get a quick pre-mix. So I'm almost finished arranging the melody now. This leads me to pro tip number three. That's using speed ups and slow downs to create switch ups before the drops. I'll show you what I mean. To do this, I'm going to highlight the chords and the piano part and use the scissors to cut off the last bar. I'm then going to right click and bounce this in place. Give it the name switch up. So what I'm going to do with this is go over to the side here where it says region and I'm going to change the fade in to speed up and the fade out to slow down. And I'm going to set this uh, somewhere between 250 to 500. You may need to experiment with different settings, but this is where this is my starting point. To enhance the effect even more, you can reverse the region. The speed up and slow down effect is to emulate the sound of a vinyl or a tape starting and stopping. And this is great just before the drop. I'll show you what I mean. You can in increase the speed up to 500 to really make the effect dramatic. Although sometimes you might find this is too much. I quite like it in this case and I'm going to keep it. You can also create a little gap at the end so that the drop hits even harder when it comes in. Okay, so now that I've arranged my melody, I'm going to move on to arranging the drums. So I want the hi-hats to start playing around bar 9 so that we get an idea of how the rhythm's going to be. But this time I'm going to remove some. I'm going to also move the percussive and the effects elements a little bit later so that they add interest as the beat goes along. And I'm not going to just let everything come in all at once. And one last thing I'm going to do is add a grimy 808 to really pay homage to the UK sound. I'm going to go over to grime bass, drag that in put that into a quick sample or optimized and I'm going to use this to complement the the other 808 turn the polyphony into mono you can give it some glide Okay, so that's the end of the second video. I really hope you learned something and found value in what I showed you today. If you did, please remember to drop us a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications bell. It would be interesting to hear how other people in the BeatStars community program and sequence their drums and bass, so why not drop a comment as well. Be sure to check out the next video in the series where I'll be mixing and mastering this drill beat ready to upload onto BeatStars. I'll be using a range of techniques including EQ, compression and saturation. So don't miss it. I'll see you there.